Well, yeah. So how? <laughs> it's like being in Tenerife. <laughs> What's this? Ooh. <laughs> Favourite song is the um, Shakira song, Waka Waka. <laughs> Hello, welcome to this week's vlog. Now it's a bit windy out here, so I'm going to shout for this bit. Often, when you're doing these vlogs and things, well, often, these are all sort of as it happens. But some of the other videos on the channel, I you know, have to plan ahead and think about when I'm going to have a bit of time. But there's some insects down here that I think by chance they've kind of really planned ahead. Have a look. So up here, absolute glut of apples, blackberries, and you can't you can't see them, but on the edge there, a load of plums. Someone's planted apple tree in a plum tree years ago. Nobody's bothering with them, full of fruit. Now, if you're a wasp, if you're a wasp, that means sugar for you at the end of your season. So wasp nests, they don't survive the winter. The whole colony dies, apart from new queens that hibernate and start again, set up new nests in somewhere else the following spring. So at this time of year, the wasp society breaks down and it's sort of every man, but it's actually every woman, because they're all girls, every woman for themselves. And they're just looking for sugary food and that's why they bother us. So sugary food, rotten plums and apples and blackberries. <laughs> and just by chance, the wasp nest is actually right down here so they certainly they certainly built their nest in a pretty good spot and looking at the activity there's still a fair bit of life going on and i think they're obviously still rearing a brood some young youngsters are still in there for sure but very soon they're gonna stop stop rearing and they're just gonna look after themselves and now the thing with wasps is if one stings you it gives off a pheromone and that's basically a target, laser guided target for all the other wasps to sting you. And it attracts them in. My face is two foot now from this hole. So far, so good. I love wasps. All it's are better. More impressive to look at. Far less likely to sting. But look at the activity in there. They are, you say busy as a bee, but look at the comings and goings. So what's the job of a wasp? What does it do for you? A wasp spends its summer or its short lifespan as part of the colony collecting insects, other insects, to feed to the wasp grubs in that nest. They're carnivorous, the grubs, and they're fed by all these workers going out, collecting, oh, it's so windy, collecting pests from your garden, your allotment, killing them and feeding them to their children. So the wasp does have a purpose, indeed it does. Look at them, absolutely amazing. Are they aggressive? I'm on top of them. So far, so good. If I poked about in that hole and disturbed them and threatened their nest, yeah, I'd start running. <laughs> Look at those. grass snakes we're under the same one little rock it's a, it's a good sign that is different ages there I think these two smaller ones are just getting ready to shed this year's I think um, a couple of different sizes really it's nice to see nice to see ready to uh, Plenty of fro frogs around. Hopefully these guys are gonna grow into some whoppers.
So I've just got home from the school. We're back at school now, so it's been a busy week at school. Um, I've had a day helping Bob again, which actually breaks the week up quite nicely. So back to schools, uh, birds of prey, the rainforest has been the theme so far. A lovely village school today, and a lovely local school uh, the other days of the week. Really good kids, so it's, it's really enjoyable. But I've got to tell you, I sort of there's a theme in these vlogs. I moan about being tired. I am just shattered, like burnout, shattered all the time. And I've decided there's a couple of things I need. One, I need a holiday. So Jack and I are going to have a few days away in Kent before long, just to sort of unwind a little bit. Um, I really want to go and see if I can find some adders and just, you know, brain out and just do something I just love without having to think about anything else. Um, but I think later in the year, we need a proper holiday. Um, we were due to go to Cuba um, just before the C word was invented and that all got scuppered so luckily jackie got the money back for that um hopefully we're gonna you know go somewhere else fingers crossed we'll report back on that later in the year where i can just find some tropical creepy crawlies and snakes and do a bit of sc not scuba diving but snorkel like snorkeling and free diving and just you know proper holiday <laughs> just to chill out and the other thing i need now three years without really really properly really properly flying a falconry bird i really hope i get out with zeus the golden eagle this year um it is on his diet plan now he's slobbed around all summer and we're going to start doing some rope work to get him fit get those muscles working get the cardio working uh, we'll probably do a few runs on the lure machine to sharpen him up and hopefully zeus and i will get out um you know falconry fishing i imagine all kinds of things maybe even golf um, I should imagine wildlife photography, it's it's brain food, it's where you go and you just zone out of life and you zone in to that kind of, that channel of that thing that really f fascinates you. So everyone should have a hobby, a uh, passion or an interest like that, where everything melts away and you're, something I never get time to do, really, really struggle, you're living in the moment. So that's something... <laughs> on the cards before I just collapse in a sloppy heap for sure. It's hard life, isn't it, eh? <laughs> hard life, yeah. Ooh, tired. <laughs> Emily will be back soon. She'll sort you out. Well, the girls did fantastically well on World Vulture Awareness Day. 
they raised 400 pounds for the vulture charity and that means they can afford or that money will buy a vulture poison response kit as well as an extra um, trail camera to sort of keep an eye out for poachers so really proud of the team here at icarus falconry i've got to say jack and i had no hand in it really it was just the girls this put so much time and effort in and thankfully we had a good turnout from the public if you're watching this and you came fantastic thank you very much hope you enjoy seeing those amazing vultures flying and working out puzzles and even carcass feeding you really got an insight into seeing how vultures behave and the girls told everyone how important they are and why they're so important and why they're so intelligent and wonderful animals to work with for us here at the Falkery Centre. Really, really proud of them. And again, lots and lots of work went into that. Even things like Emily doing a special painting to sort of commemorate the day, which is which is still available to raise for charity, for the charity. So yeah, really proud of the team. Good turnout. I don't know though, what it would have been like if it had been World Owl Awareness Day, help the owls. Honestly bet you we'd have had four times as many people turn up. And that's the sad thing with conservation. When you're trying to help really, really important species, species that are important to their ecosystems, if not the world, it's really difficult if it's an animal that's perceived or thought of as being horrible, dirty, ugly, compared to an animal that's perceived to be cute, fluffy and cuddly. It's amazing how our minds work. So when you're trying to champion an endangered frog, it's much more difficult than trying to champion an endangered panda, for instance. And that's the problem with vulture awareness. It is getting people to understand these wonderful, wonderful birds. The girls did well, very well indeed. Emily's been restocking on some of her art in the gift shop. And I think considering this is one of her very, very, very early pieces, the light's in the way. If you want a tattoo, I think save with Chaffinch on Facebook. Our Emily here, look at that. Look at that. That's such an old piece of us. That, if I had tattoos, that would be the one I'd have. And then she's done this a fantastic picture for Vulture Awareness Day. Come on, isn't that the most beautiful, beautiful picture? And that's original art, open to offers. No one dug deep enough on Vulture Awareness Day. Absolutely beautiful. So get onto Facebook. Dogs. Horses, birds of praise, mythical beasts. Highly recommend Emily Mortimer, a savour of Chaffinch. Very talented indeed. Oh. Oh, it's poorly. Oh dear. So, it's the most amazing pets you can get. Believe me, a pet fancy rats. The sad thing is, a couple of years, is your average lifespan. Most of them end up with either tumours or breathing problems. And it's it's just genetic. These things have been bred for hundreds of years now, really. And Neil here, he's a good two years old. His brothers died a couple of weeks ago. And Neil, sadly, he's definitely on his last legs. Been to many, many schools together. And it's sad because rats they're affectionate things and they are truly one of the most wonderful pets you could get. Bless him. We'll put him back in with his glades. Hopefully they can a bit of comfort and snuggle him up as they were a second ago. But he's certainly a poor little old boy. Bless you. Go on, let you go. Get in there, Neil. <laughs> Hello. Doctor's evening, 
Uh, Emily and Joe are flying birds. Well, Emily's over there somewhere. Um, but between them, tag team, they're flying birds for our brilliant adopters who, you know, they, they put back into the Falkland Centre. And to be honest, uh, a year or so ago, they helped really keep this place afloat, feeding the birds. Um, usually it goes on things like paint for the aviaries and stuff like that. You know, the, the little things that make it nice for the birds uh, and for you. Uh, so Jackie's just putting a spread out over there. So the format is, if you adopt a bird, it's £50. You get your name plaque on um, their aviary. You get a lovely sort of information pack about the bird and a photo of the bird. But it's, it's more like it's about giving back, I guess. And then once a year, you get invited to our adopter's evening. I would say a lovely summer's evening. We've just dodged a huge rainstorm. Um, so that's what's going on this evening. And again, brilliant staff. Worked all day. Now they're here this evening uh, helping run the adopters. Um, other news, oh, really, a really good friend who runs a Fulcrum Centre down south, he's managed to breed tawny eagles. Now, he's been trying to breed tawny eagles for about seven years, and he's pulled it off this year. He's produced two parent-reared young tawny eagles. I would imagine the only person in the UK that's bred tawny eagles successfully uh, for quite a while. I could be wrong on that. So, that's good news. Um, bad news is... Uh, as, as, as I say this now, um, li literally two minutes ago, um, it was announced on BBC News that the Queen of England has died. So, yeah, quite a shock, really. It's one of those things, a bit like David Attenborough, one of those people that's been around the whole of my life, and I feel quite old, and they was around, lived a life long before I was born. Um, those sort of icons of England, really. Uh, the Queen, the royal family. So, kind of... Yeah, quite sad news, really. I'm not a big royalist, but yeah, it's, that's not good. Not good news at all. So, a little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news, and that is life indeed, isn't it? Enjoy the rest of the vlog. I better go and do something. Here's our tawny owl here, Willow and she's molted into a fine set of feathers this year. Beautiful tail, look at that. She's looking absolutely beautiful. That is the owl of storybooks, certainly in England, the brown owl, the owl of the woodlands, the tawny owl. And she is probably one of the most reliable birds here on our experience days. Flying in her natural woodland habitat, really stunning and beautiful to see and i think the nicest thing is up there and all around the center at night we have wild tawny owls that come and sing sing back to her if you like beautiful good luck with her emily mm -hmm. hope the guests enjoy her she's doing an owl thing now and not looking at the camera well there she is <laughs> am i supposed to be saying something no <laughs> so leah's here she's giving sky a feed so sky's been handled now by various staff members you saw on last week's vlog, you saw Olga feeding her. She just gets her used to that sort of falconry centre place where it's not the one-to-one -one that a falconry bird tends to have with a falconer for falconer itself. But she's eating while using that beak to eat the food. Let's have a look at your nose, Leah. <laughs> does your mum know that's in there? Uh, yes. She does now. Yeah. Well, the adopter's evening's gone. Best ever, without a doubt. Absolutely like clockwork. We tweak the timings of the arrival time and the finish time and, and the sort of the itinerary. A fantastic bunch of supportive people for Icarus Fulkery. All had a lovely time, we've had a lovely time and we've finished when we could still see each other because in previous adoption evenings, it's all got a bit too dark. Look at this. These lights here that my friend Andy installed, just in case we need to be in here at night in the dark, which is quite rare, we're in the, um, in the UK wildlife area over the weekend. We're probably gonna, we're probably gonna be shut over this weekend um, due to the royal death out of respect. So we'll probably be doing some work getting these inside the enclosure, permanently kit it out for them. But I do hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. Keep an eye on the channel. Oh, I thought the newts were out. Keep an eye on the channel for more. Go through the playlist, see what you like, and I'll see you soon.